Hello and welcome to the third week of Season 20, Season of Defiance, starting on March 14th, 2023. So for week three, let's have a look at our legacy rotation, starting with the Forsaken expansion. Ready if you are. Let's see what's out there. The Dreaming City this week is at a medium curse level, which means Pet Revenge can be found in the Davilion Mists and has the Oracle Engine mission for the next week. The Blind Well features Hive enemies and the Plague, Rhaegar. The Ascendant Challenge this week will be the Shattered Ruins, which can be found over in the Spine of Keris on the Dreaming City. Next up, the Shadowkeep expansion. On the Moon, the weekly story mission is a mysterious disturbance. The Trove Guardian is located in the Anchor of Light. The Wandering Nightmare is the Nightmare of Zortal in Sorrow's Harbour. And the Nightmare Hunts this week will be Tanix, Isolation, Zydron, Servitude, and Ghoul, Rage. For our Beyond Light expansion, on Europa this week, Phylax the Warrior will be the Empire Hunt, Asterion's Abyss will be the Eclipse Zone, and the Exo Challenge will be Agility. For the 30th Anniversary expansion, we have the Loot Rotation for Dares of Eternity, which will be on Week 3's rotation, with the Scatterhorn Armour Set and the Lightkin Armour Set being available. The weapons available this week are the Kinetic Rapid Fire Frame Auto Rifle Chroma Rush, the Kinetic Lightweight Frame Grenade Launcher Ignition Code, the Void Rapid Fire Frame Pulse Rifle Grid Skipper, the Kinetic Lightweight Frame Sidearm Farewell, the Solar Pinpoint Slug Frame Shotgun Sonja's Tail, the Rapid Fire Frame Machine Gun Shattered Cipher, the Arc Precision Frame Fusion Rifle Main Ingredient, the Kinetic Adaptive Frame Sniper Rifle Long Shadow, the Arc Omelon Adaptive Frame Sidearm Last Dance, the Kinetic Aggressive Frame Shotgun Toil and Trouble, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Shotgun Wishbringer, and the Void Adaptive Frame Pulse Rifle Last Edition. For the Witch Queen expansion, the Witch Queen weekly story mission is The Ghosts, where the modifiers are Fire Pit and Raider Shields, as well as Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. The Wellspring activity has been updated to include a featured Throne World weapon, Verus's armor, and a weapon pattern as its rewards. Raids and Dungeons the King's Hall Raid Challenge this week is the first encounter, Totems, called The Grass is Always Greener. Players cannot take the same brand type twice in a row. The Vow the Disciple Challenge this week is the fourth encounter, Rolk, called Looping Catalyst. This is where Guardians must not lose the Leeching Force before the damage phase. The Vault of Glass Challenge this week is the second encounter, Oracles, called The Only Oracle for You. Players cannot destroy the same Oracle more than once. The Garden of Salvation challenge this week is the fourth encounter, Sanctified Mind, called 0 to 100, where you must fully fill each conflux with 30 moats within 10 seconds of initially banking the first set of moats. The last wish challenge this week is the first encounter, Kali, called Summoning Ritual. Players must activate and cleanse all nine plates, then kill all nine knights and ogres before damaging Kali. Your pinnacle raid will be the Deep Stone Crypt over on Europa, which means all challenges will be available for each encounter. These are the first encounter, Crypt Security, called Red Rover. This is where all Guardians must be Operator and shoot the two panels on the lower levels. The second encounter, Atrax 1, called Copies of Copies, where you must not send any Atrax 1 replicant debuffs into the airlock slash space. The third encounter, Tanix Part 1, called Of All Trades. Guardians must perform each role at least once, Operator, Scanner and Suppressor. The fourth encounter, Tanix, called The Core 4. Guardians must dunk all four cores before each DPS phase. Also, with the Deepstone Crypt being the featured raid, this does mean that you can farm the final boss for a chance at the exotic rocket launcher, Eyes of Tomorrow. And the pinnacle dungeon for this week will be the duality over on the derelict Leviathan on the moon. Next up, challenges. So for week three, we have the longest path. Complete week three of the We Stand Unbroken quest for a war table upgrade and challenge XP+. Bane of the Shadow Legion. Use abilities to defeat 50 combatants in the Defiant Battlegrounds playlist. Defeating combatants with the Strand subclass will grant bonus progress for a War Table upgrade and challenge XP. Defiantly Defeated. Defeat 150 combatants with Seasonal Defiance weapons. These are Perpetualus, Prodigal Return, Regent, Caretaker, Raketeur, and Royal Executioner. Bonus progress awarded for combatants defeated in seasonal activities for a war table upgrade and challenge XP+. EDZ activities. In the EDZ and progress by completing bounties, patrols, public events and lost sectors, 
for Challenge XP Plus and Bright Dust. Commendation Appreciation. Earn progress for giving 10 commendations in Vanguard Crucible and Gambit activities for Challenge XP Plus and Bright Dust. Iron Sharpens Iron. Complete Iron Banner matches. Earn bonus progress for wins for Challenge XP Plus and Bright Dust. Primeval Entourage. Defeat 100 taken in Gambit. Earn bonus progress for defeating tougher combatants for Challenge XP Plus and Bright Dust. Ultimate Champion. Defeat 60 champions in any Nightfall Strike on Hero difficulty or higher. Earn bonus progress at higher difficulties for Challenge XP Plus and Bright Dust. Mid Range Calibration. Calibrate 200 mid range weapons, hand cannons, auto rifles, glaives, fusion rifles, and machine guns in the EDZ. Bonus progress for rapidly defeating combatants for Challenge XP Plus and Bright Dust. And one classified challenge. And speaking of Bright Dust, we have our third eververse of the season for the week of March 14th, 2023. Available this week for Bright Dust, we have the Vehement Flock Exotic Emote for 3,250 Bright Dust, the Surging Current Exotic Sparrow for 2,500 Bright Dust, the Vitreous Entrance a Legendary Transmat Effect for 450 Bright Dust, the Seven Sisters Legendary Shader for 300 Bright Dust, the Oiled Gunmetal Legendary Shader for 300 Bright Dust, the Stress Ball Exotic Emote for 3,250 Bright Dust, my 10 gallon hat legendary emote for 700 bright dust the iok fast shell exotic ghost shell for 2000 bright dust the motive force exotic sparrow for 2500 bright dust the velocimancer exotic ship for 2000 bright dust the knight's elegacy exotic weapon ornament for the exotic sword the lament for 1250 bright dust and finally the thumbs down projection the legendary ghost projection for 1,500 Bright Dust. Hello. 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 Your daily Lost Sector will show you a flag outside which will give you details of threats, shields, champions and exotic armor you will find inside. But if you are new to the game or you are using an alternate character and can't find the flag outside, you will have to run through the Lost Sector normally to have it show up on your map as a legend slash master. Which you can either do solo or with a fire team, but you will only be able to earn a chance at the exotic drop when completing solo. Tuesday, March 14th will be the Excavation Site 12 on the EDZ for Exotic Boots, Solar Threat, Solar and Strand Surges with Arc Elemental Shields, Overcharged Swords with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Wednesday, March 15th will be the Skydock 4 on the EDZ for Exotic Gauntlets, Solar Threat, Solar and Strand Surges with Void Elemental Shields, Overcharged Shotgun with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Thursday, March 16th will be the quarry on the EDZ for exotic chests, Void Threat, Solar and Strand Surges with Void and Solar Elemental Shields, Overcharged Grenade Launcher with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Friday, March 17th will be the Affiliates Rest on the Dreaming City for exotic helmets, Stasis Threat, Solar and Strand Surges with Void Elemental Shields, Overcharged Shotgun with Unstoppable and Overload Champions. Saturday, March 18th will be the Chamber of Starlight on the Dreaming City for Exotic Boots, Solar Threat, Void and Strand Surges with Void and Solar Elemental Shields, Overcharged Swords with Unstoppable and Overload Champions. Sunday, March 19th will be Perdition on Europa for Exotic Gauntlets, Arc Threat, Void and Strand Surges with Void and Arc Elemental Shields, Overcharged Fusion Rifle with Barrier and Overload Champions. And finally, back round to Monday, March 20th, will be Bunker E15 on Europa for Exotic Chests, Void Threat, Void and Strand Surges with Void Elemental Shields, Overcharged Grenade Launcher with Barrier and Overload Champions. Lead the way. Our third featured Nightfall will see us face off against the Taken Hydra, Parthenus, in the Hypernet Current, where you have a chance to get a Pinnacle Engram if you complete the Nightfall with a score of 200k or more. You will be able to earn high-end gear for your characters including the Nightfall Featured Weapon, Exotic Gear, Enhancement Cores, Enhancement Prisms and Ascendant Shards. The higher the Nightfall difficulty, the more common the drop will be, with the Featured Weapon and Exotic Gear being uncommon at Hero difficulty, to being common with Ascendant Shards in Grand Masters. The Grand Master Nightfall difficulty will return on April 11th. Your Nightfall modifiers are Hero difficulty, maximum effective level is 1765. Matchmaking is available. Extra Shields, 
champion's foe, you will face either barrier, overload or unstoppable champions. You can either use intrinsic exotics, use a subclass debuff or unlock anti-champion mods from the seasonal artifact. One elemental threat, 25% increase to that element's incoming damage, an elemental surge that will give you 25% bonus to outgoing damage, strand surge, 25% bonus to outgoing strand damage, an overcharge weapon giving 25% bonus to damage, legend maximum effective level 1815, no matchmaking, equipment locked you will be unable to change equipment once the mission starts, master maximum effective level 1820, champions mob this difficulty adds more champion enemies, and chafe radar is disabled. Your choice of intrinsic anti-champion artifact mods are anti-barrier pulse and anti-barrier sidearm, unstoppable scout rifle, overload bow, overload submachine gun and ultra rifle, and medieval champion where glaze fire projectiles that stun unstoppable champions, swords stun overload champions on consecutive hits. You also have exotic weapons and armor that can help with intrinsic mods as well. For anti-barrier the kinetic bow wish ender, the kinetic linear fusion rifle arblest, the new kinetic pulse rifle revision zero, the solar energy hand cannon Ariana's vow, the solar heavy sword the lament, and the titan exotic gauntlet second chance, which gain a second charge of your shield throw melee which becomes shield piercing and stuns barrier champions. For unstoppable the kinetic fusion rifle bastion, the kinetic hand cannon malfeasance, the solar energy sidearm devil's ruin, the Void Heavy Bow Leviathan's Breath, and the Hunter Gauntlet's Athris's Embrace, which have a chance to stun an unstoppable champion with their empowered weighted knife. And for Overload, the Void Energy Bow Le Monarch, the Arc Energy Linear Trace Rifle Divinity, the Arc Heavy Machine Gun Thunderlord, and the Warlock Exotic Boots the Secant Filaments, which when you drop an Empowering Rift, any weapon that is fired from inside that well can cause an Overload champion to be stunned. Next up, Lord Shax brings Team Scorch to the featured Crucible playlist for the third week of the season. Delightful! Team Scorched is a 6v6 PvP mode where all players wield a Scorch cannon. Equipped weapons and abilities cannot be used in this game mode. Movement abilities e.g. lift, jump and glide, sprinting and emotes can be used. Players are forced to use a Scorch cannon that cannot be dropped. These Scorch cannons have 100 ammo, which is replenished on respawn. Matches have a 7 minute timer, players have a 3 second respawn timer, Kills give plus one point each. The first team to reach 60 points wins. If the timer runs out before the team reaches 50 points, the team with the largest score wins. The player's current and longest kill streaks are shown at the top of the screen below the score. And unfortunately, we won't be getting the planned Iron Banner next week due to an annoying bug that has been around since the launch of Lightfall. Where, after playing enough Crucible, Strikes, or Gambit, or anything with a commendation screen, all other guardians and sometimes you can disappear. But don't fret, the fix is scheduled to go live on March 16th, two days after the weekly reset. So, Bungie have made the tough decision to delay Iron Banner by a week. But, good news for Trials fans, Bungie will be moving Trials of Osiris up to the next weekend instead, since the issue should be fixed before Friday morning. And with Iron Banner moving to the following week, this means that there will only be a one week break between the first Iron Banner, which ends on March 28th, and the second Iron Banner week, which starts on the 4th of April. That is amazing. So as a reminder, Trials of Osiris is a 3v3 PvP high stakes variant of elimination. Only available from Friday reset until Tuesday weekly reset, Trials gives every player the chance to show off their PvP skills to obtain some of Destiny's most sought after weapons and armor. Players that compete in Trials of Osiris will have all of their games tracked through a passage card, a ticket purchased from Saint-14 in the lower hangar of the tower. Winning rounds and matches in Trials will grant exclusive weapons, armor, pinnacle gear, masterwork materials and even adept gear for the most skilled players who can reach the lighthouse with a flawless ticket of 7 games won and no losses. 5 round wins will bag you that match for your passage card. By competing in Trials you do have a chance to pick up 2 pinnacle engrams from playing each week one from 50 round wins and the other from winning 7 games. These do not have to be done all in one go but you do have to complete them before the weekly reset. Before we go, if you have enjoyed this content and found it most informative then please hit that subscribe button and check out our show over at twotitansandahunter.com. We would be greatly appreciative. There will be double XP in the Gambit playlist this week, so if you want a fast track in getting that sweet new ritual weapon, the Ecliptic Distaff Glaive, and Gambit Ornament, the Viricent Spindle, then this will be a good start. 
And that's it for our third week of Season of Defiance. We'll catch you next week. Allons-y. Guardian down.